Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Thaw Thursday. And this is a this is a face video. I I get kind of excited because I love being in front of the camera and being all animated. And I don't have opportunities to do that when I'm just slinging some cards around and showing you some things with the cards. So I'm excited about this one because up until this point, we have covered lots of juicy topics on Thaw Thursdays. And while I'm grateful for that, it's mostly been information. And I recently covered in a whole other video, not Thoth related, I'll leave it in the cards for you, uh, about, about doing your own thing and making videos that make you more approachable and up until this point, I feel like my Thoth videos may be very popular, but it doesn't lend a lot of room for dialogue. So I'm going to start sharing some of the things that I actually do with the Thoth Tarot uh, instead of just the information that I find out. <laughs> uh, I love researching different various things with the Thoth Tarot and the knowledge that I may put out on Thought Thursdays is just because that's where my particular love of tarot itself goes. Uh, I just, I like to dive into juicy topics uh, from a Gnostic type of a standpoint. And not that I am sharing actual personal things that I may do with the deck. So today I wanted to share something that I do with the deck. And that is scrying. Scrying is probably my very first form of divination I ever did. I never, I didn't do it with cards because I, in my household, you couldn't even have those things. When I am in a meditative state, it feels, I've said this lots and lots of times, it doesn't actually feel like you're meditating. Like, you know, it doesn't feel like that to me. It feels like a zone out. Like the whole room gets fuzzy, the images kind of blend together, and it's kind of like when you wake up from, from sleeping and your eyes have been open, and you're like, wow, why are my eyes open? <laughs> That's happened to me so many times, it's not even funny, and it's freaked me the hell out. I'm like, I know I was just asleep, why are my eyes open? Because, you know, you can feel your eyes pop open. I don't know if that's it happened to anybody else, but it happens to me all the time. Um... But it kind of feels like that, like once I get out of that trance-like state or meditative state, whatever you want to call it, my eyes have been open the whole time. But I've not been visualizing the room, I've been visualizing my, the images in my mind's eye. So that's actually what's happening. But I use water, I use smoke, I use mirrors, and I use the tarot. Um, as the writer deck is my mother deck, um, I did learn tarot in general with that deck, but as the Thoth is like my love, it's like my love, my life partner in a deck. <laughs> uh, the images, there was something about these images and these color variations, even though they do have meaning, it, it pulls something out of me. This colorful shit pulls something out of me that I didn't even know I needed. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, I have four cards, four, four cards here from the Thoth deck that I have actually used in scrying. And I'm gonna go over kind of what happened with each of them. What what I do is I, I pull cards first, okay? Nothing's happening, I'm here alone, I'm in the silence. Maybe I'll put some instrumental music on, but a lot of the times when I wanna dive into my own psyche, it tends to distract me more than anything, uh, so. I love listening to instrumental music when I'm just slinging cards or when I'm journaling or something like that, like studying type of a thing. But when I want to dive in the psyche in a meditative trance-like thing, I don't want any distractions. I want it to just be, I just want to be completely focused in. And, uh, you know, just, just FYI. Um, but these are five of the ones that I have pulled and then go into the meditative state with their images in my brain and then some powerful shit has come out of that. Princess of Wands. Mm -hmm. Or the Page of Wands if you're in the writer if you're using the writer deck. And I so resonate with this card. It's it's not even funny. More so the Princess of Wands because I never thought that I had fire. 
I was always in my own head. I was always, as an Aquarius, I was so focused on, I don't want to say myself because that sounds really pathetic and selfish, <laughs> but there was, there was, there, there is a selfishness with Aquarians because they're so unique and I know I'm not saying this to be vain. We are, us Aquarians are so unique that it's hard for us to connect with others that are finding connections with other people. I don't know if that made any sense, but that's what I feel. I feel like sometimes I can't relate to a lot of people because my mind is so far out there, you know, way out there, X-Files music going, that I kind of find it hard to generate you know, certain levels of certain, certain things with other people. I, I hope that that makes sense. But anyways, but because of that, and because I can, I tend to have fiery energy with my, in terms of my introversion and in terms of my creativity and how my uniqueness has come out with my creativity and I use that drive. I use that, I use that creative will all the time in terms of myself, in terms of my own exploration, I use a lot of this, this energy right here. Look at this beautiful image. So what has happened with this is I hold this image in my head, right? And once I go into that, into that meditative state, I hold that image, this image in my mind. And what happened with this one time, okay, I'm only going to give you like one time accounts of these because it would be here all day. But this one time I ended up in this chamber, uh, like a, it looked like I was in the foyer of a castle. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like a stone castle. Think back to every Gothic novel you've ever read. Okay. And I'm in the foyer and it's, there's fire vessels like uh like that look like bowls with oil in them uh you know think national treasure kind of a thing uh they had these vessels and they look like priestess fires lining this foyer okay and then in the middle there was this figure here this uh this feminine looking figure that had no face no nipples and no genitalia she just looked i don't know she looked she looked kind of transparent, you know, like kind of ethereal. And she was standing at this altar doing this. She was standing at this altar and her hands were on either side of this altar and her, and her head was bowed. When I tell you, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I was completely dumbfounded. I journaled about it for a while, uh, about what, what was that? What was my role there? Like she looked like she had it handled. There was nothing on this altar space and it did look, it didn't look like this, like this altar that she this fire altar that she has, but the generated, the generated image in my mind's eye was so vivid and so powerful that I just stood there not knowing what to do. And it was that feeling of not knowing my role in the daydream that I journaled about. Because I don't think it was necessarily the, the arena that I was in or the fire. It could have just maybe this transparent figure was me and I was outside of myself. It could have been anything. But the fact that my mind, mind's eye generated this image off of this card that I still think about, like it, was, it feels like a recurring dream now that I'm talking about it, is so vivid that that's where scrying becomes powerful to me. Uh, what's next? Lust card. Oh, this, this is my favorite tarot card of all time. Just, if it just fucking is. <sighs> anyway, I have scried with this once because to be honest with you, doing healing work in terms of my religion this filled me with a need to read the book of Revelation in the Bible. And when I do, and there's so much apocalyptical talk in, in the book of Revelation, that it, it ends up filling me with feelings of dread, 
and I don't like that feeling. <laughs> I need to sit with that. There might be some shadow work to do in the uh, in the upside of that, but in terms of her archetypal being being the whore of Babylon from the Book of Revelation, in my own eyes, I have to sit with that. But this one time, it was just this podium, right? This uh, like a preacher podium. And it had a Bible laid out to the book of Revelation with this ominous looking. It looked like a candle, but it wasn't burning. And it was like gnarled and shit. Sit like fastened to this podium. The book was the, the Bible was open to Revelations and it was so dark. It was so dark. You couldn't hardly read the words. And, and I was in my own body standing at this podium, right? So I had, I felt when I woke up from this that I felt like I was the preacher and that I was giving a sermon on Revelation and that filled me with such a sense of, holy shit, I never want to do this. And what, when I looked back on that, I thought, you know, maybe this is the part of me that's the hierophant, not the lust. Maybe this is a part of me that is trying to teach myself new new ways of looking at the Bible, new ways of looking at religion and things like that and molding and shaping my own views around what I endured in my childhood that this card inadvertently helped me with that with that that image that I had come up with. All of these are are messages that their messages they but all they did all scrying with these did was generate an even bigger image in my mind's eye and I'm trying and I would try later on to relate those images those big vivid images in my brain with the actual card like as this is lust this is technically the strength card in the thought deck right and when I thought about that I thought I need to find my own strength in my embodiment of the Hierophant or come up with a way to formulate a new relationship with the Hierophant card in the tarot itself. So that's what I mean by scrying with the tarot. It's more so that I'm generating a much vivid, a much more vivid picture in my mind's eye, journal about that and sit with that, actively think on it for like a month. And then revisit it when the card may come back up in a reading. I can revisit those images. I hope that I hope that made sense. <laughs> this card, I actually on a thought Thursday, I have touched on scrying with this. This is the one that has I've most scried with because I don't know what it is. Maybe it was maybe it's the fact that I like Stargate as a TV show and there's a lot of Egyptian sim symbolism in, within that show <laughs> or it could just be the Egyptian culture that's within that's that's embedded into the Thoth tarot in general but there's something about this this is the four of discs okay so the four of pentacles but this massively this massive this massively stable structure here and you see all the four elements and it just reminded me of, of, even though there's water here, I love that Crowley chose to put a moat in a pentacle card. How profound is that? That the four of discs, there, there is some emotion involved. So I, I kind of took that with me on my journey as well. But it was more so that without the, even with the water here, I envision this to be what the inside of a pyramid looks like. And that's what vision I had. And it's the same vision every time. I end up right here. And it's a sand colored floor. Okay. And on each corner, uh, like I'm in like the courtyard, right? And it's completely closed in. There's this point at the top of the pyramid. And what happened is I'm standing here and w I can see these pillars on the inside of this in this courtyard I can see these pillars and it's and I can see the elements in them there's like little you know those castle windows that are kind of like you know u-shaped in the water one there would be there would be like waterfalls inside and the fire there would be fires 
going and so on. So it was like I could see the elements play out in these fortresses, in these pillars, I'll say, and how structured they are. This little doorway right here was the only light in the whole place besides the fire and the fire pillar. And even though it may look like with the shadows they placed in here in this painting, it may look like it's lit up, like there's no top to it, but with the top embedded in it, it's real dark in there. And I could, the only light was like this long light that was cast to me from this doorway right here. That wasn't a real doorway, it just was like an archway, right? And you could see the moat out, out here, but that was it. That was all I could see. I was the light, and the door, and then like the little the shimmering of the water from the sun outside. I hope that vision makes sense. But anyway, when I relate that image in my mind to this card, I think about being locked in, being in a rut, right? And when I think about the structure of the fours, I think about, yes, I need this structure, but I also need to find where the light is I need to be able to not completely close myself in always have a way out always have an exit plan and it's been a beautiful experience with this card you could say that in the thought tarot this is like a stalker card of mine <laughs> and then last is cups five of cups <laughs> Look at this. Look at this beautiful orange. This, I think about um, that old wives tale. Red sky at night, sailor's delight. Red sky in the morning, sailor's warning. And how if it's red like this in the morning, there will be great storms that you'd have to battle when you go out to sea. Okay, this is a fisherman tale. And if it's red like this in the evening, you'll have smooth sailing. And it's always true. Every single time I have experienced this red sky in the morning, it's always stormed in the afternoon and vice versa. Nice and quiet night if there's a red sky at night. Even though I'm like nowhere near the sea. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Anyway, back to this. So I had pulled this and, and I'm going to touch on the pulls in a second, but I pulled this and I was trying in my mind's eye to keep this pentagram in my mind's eye. Like the fact that this is a pentagram and the shiny glass cups sitting on the, on the, on the edges of that pentagram. I was trying to formulate that in my head. But guess what? That's not what I saw in my mind's eye. I was standing in this bog. Kind of like the Seven of Cups. This debauchery kind of, a, kind of an image. But it was brown. It was like this brownish. It was like this marshland. And it looked. It looked like there was vegetation everywhere. But standing water everywhere but because the the sky was kind of evening and you'd think that this beautiful red orangey sky would be mirrored in the water here but it's so milky the water is so muddy that it's not mirroring the sky that's that's this right in my opinion that's muddled somehow and instead of forming the pentagram and what that might mean in terms of all the fives and the fives mixed with the cups and the fives mixed with emotions and shit like that, we could go on and on and on with the five of cups symbolism. But my mind's eye ch chose to generate this bog, this swamp marshland like shit. And my feet were ankle deep where I was standing. And I remember being fearful of taking another step in the, in my daydream. Okay. I'll call it my daydream in this meditative state. And in, in my mind's eye, I was afraid, vividly afraid 
viscerally afraid to take another step. I think that like looking back, thinking back on it, I think what happened was I was afraid that if I took another step, I would sink. Because you couldn't see how deep the water is. And I remember I'm safe where I'm standing. But if I take another step, I'm just going to drown in this sludge. And is that not a beautiful message for the five of fucking cups? When I link the two. Now in the throes of these, you know, states of consciousness that I was in, I'm not getting the messages right away. I'm not. I'm, it's more so that it's a, I, I, I do the damn thing and then I come back and assess. These flashes are ways for me to, one, gain more knowledge of this damn deck for myself. And two, for me to explore the psyche in, in not just in the moment type of a way, but in a way that I can visit, revisit things. And I, I like that about the, this, uh, this deck's ability to do that for me. Now, I know that there are many people out there that are prolific in scrying and they all tell you something different about scrying, even using the tarot for scrying. But this is just, I just wanted to give, you know, some of my takes on this. And I do want to say one other thing about pulling for scrying is that I have done both. I have done conscious pulls and I have done random pulls. Now what that means is now for me, I haven't gotten good enough to do multiple cards, like a spread in my mind's eye. I don't really like to do that. I like to concentrate on one image because I mean, who's to say that I would be in this marshland and then this princess of wands would come in and be trying to set up this stone altar on a marsh, on a marshland, but she can't because it's a marshland and she can't you can't do any masonry on Marsh. Ooh, see, I could do something like that. <laughs> anyway, anyway, okay. Conscious pulls are where you go through the deck, okay, and you just pick a card yourself to work with. Like, say it's a soccer card or say it's a card that you really don't understand very well, uh, especially when using this deck because it's so much different than the writer deck. You could pull a card consciously, which means you're doing it yourself. You're not doing it in a, in like in a shuffle and draw kind of a way. I've done that. I've done it where I pick a card and then I use that to formulate images within scry, scry divination. Or you could do random, which means you shuffle the deck and then pull unconsciously. And then use, use whatever card comes up. And try not, and I try not to convince myself to pick another card. I try to convince myself that it's the universe's way of saying I need to work with this card in my mind's eye. So I hope that this made sense. And I hope that this gets us out of here's some information splat <laughs> with the Thoth Tarot. Because I do want to give y'all some things that I do with the deck from, coming from a personal place. And... I hope that you'll join me on that ride as well because we've we've been on quite a journey so far. Also, I'm going to end this with saying how cool is this fucking ramen shirt? I, and I'm wearing this with um, this. this I bought this at the, at the thrift shop. It made me think of Cinderella. And Lady Tremaine is like, what lovely beads. <laughs> and I thought, Cinderella's definitely in her attic eating fucking ramen. <laughs> I hope that you continue to join me on Thoth Thursdays. Come back in a couple for some more Thoth love. Much love, people.